All right, guys, how's it going? Um, so here is the life after the challenge seminar I had last week on Wednesday, and um, just here, this uh, video is just gonna go over the finer points of the nutrition uh, seminar. Um, basically highlighting some extra things as well towards the end, <clears throat> but I want to make sure that you guys actually get a great grasp on this, because if you guys are trying to still cut body fat and lose weight, which which I'm gathering you guys are trying to do, um, if you're still in the program at least, this is going to be the one thing you guys need to start getting down, okay? Um, we all know nutrition is very important. If you've been through a challenge, you know exactly how important it is, because that's what yielded you guys all of your results. Um, remember, nutrition is about 70 to 75% of what you're going to achieve as far as your weight loss goals, okay? So let's start getting start getting into it. I said this the purpose of, of this video now, not seminar, but the seminar was to teach you guys about how to eat um, for fat loss and performance, okay? How to come up with uh, macros, calories you need, and everything like that, all right? So let's go ahead. So most everyone has already come to the end of a challenge, finished challenging, and they're kind of in this question like, okay, I got these great results. I either got 20, 40, 50 pounds off you know, or whatever you, you, you ended up getting, and now it's kind of like, well, now what? Um, which I can first say is, well, what do you want, you know, like, and, and as it says right here is, if you can envision your perfect self, what would you look like, what would you feel like, you know, what would you be able to do? And that needs to be your goal, getting to that level, you know? So... Real quick, guys, um, this is a a, <clears throat> a comment from one of the guys that I listen to as far as motivation and, and clarity when it comes to mindset and goal setting is Tony Robbins. Uh, honestly, if you've never heard this guy talk or on a YouTube video or I'm actually trying to get to one of his um, weekend seminars, hopefully within the next few months here, uh, you guys need to listen to him. Um, at least there's a lot of people, but this man in particular, because he actually kind of gives you the keys to how to set your mindset up for success, whether it be in, in health and fitness or business or whatever you have you, okay? Um, we all know that mindset dictates everything, all right? 100% is mindset, where your mind is at and what you're willing to do, what you're willing to sacrifice to achieve your goals, okay? So, first question. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, how do you want to look? We have three examples right here, and we we'll just go through them real quick. Is the first one all right? Um, is just a really girl, uh, really fit girl. Okay, just looks like she works out. Looks like she's pretty toned. You know, lifts some weights, but nothing too crazy. Okay, about average fit, fit looking girl. Okay, she looks really good. Uh, grabbing her butt. I'm sorry about that. I was, didn't notice that until now, but. You know, she exercises and she takes care of herself. She obviously eats healthy. Over here, we have a woman with the a little bit more of the harder look, um, probably a fitness or a bikini competitor or a physique competitor. Um, you know, everyone wants to look different. It, it's not my my place to tell you what you want to look like, but if you want to look a certain way or feel a certain way, that is completely your goal. Okay, or you could be like any one of these three, four women right here. All they're doing is just wearing, uh, looks like sports bras and underwear, and they look great. They look like they can wear it. They can flaunt it. They can pretty much pull off a two-piece with ease and comfort, and they're happy about that, okay? They, they don't look like they, 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 um, they're trying to get too hard to look. They exercise. They do stuff, but they're not too much into, you know, looking um, very, very toned or very, very... Um, um, cut, okay, so they're just normal looking women that work out, that do stuff, and are very fit, and able to feel confident in a, um, in a two-piece, so that's the look, now, what about feeling, because that's important too, guys, you know, how would you feel, stronger, more energy, um, if you're on some types of medications, you know, would you be off of that, um, whether it be for diabetic medication, or high blood pressure, you know, stuff like that, less aches and pains. A lot of you guys came to me in this program saying, oh, this hurts, that hurts, and 
and I can't do this that well, I can't bend this arm, I can't bend this knee, I can't reach over my head, wherever have you. And after some good exercise and moving the body around and losing some weight, you're able to do a lot of those things. So keep going with that. You know, more confident in your body. How would you feel? Would you feel more confident in looking a lot better? I'm sure you would. That's why you're here. Okay. You know, what would you be able to do as far as like non-scale victories? Now, if you guys noticed in the emails, we have a bunch of non-scale victories for people that are, you know, that have other things. Like they're able to wear pants they have not worn in a couple years or um, they have... You know, the, the, the doctor told them their, 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 blood, their blood levels are great or their cholesterol levels have dropped. You know, whatever have you. It's your goal. What is it that you have a victory over? You know, they're, they're able to sleep better at night. Something like that. Run upstairs without, without you know, worrying about injuring themselves or, or without breathing heavy. You know, a couple other examples. 30 push-ups. They're going to knock out 30 push-ups. No problem. Run a 10K. I know I have a bunch of runners in my, in my as clients, and that's fine. You know, you probably weren't able to run a 10K before, but now you're able to do it because you dropped weight and got into shape. Run one of the Tough Mudders, the Mudderbrella, the Spartan Race, whatever those crazy obstacle courses are. I think, uh, I don't know, between the, between my clients, I think there's like three or four teams doing a Tough Mudder in, 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 in like January, uh, not January, I'm sorry, June or July. So, you know, stuff like that. You're going to be able to run that without getting tired as easy. You know, like I said, walking upstairs, buying smaller jeans, shirts, dresses, shorts, business suits, bikinis. Summer's coming, okay? So are you able to wear that with confidence after all you've accomplished or what you want to accomplish? Okay? So first step to goal setting, all right, is getting SMART. That's why I call it SMART. It's an actual acronym, all right? Basically, it describes the type of goal or the way you should put your goal, all right, as far as it's too easy to say you want to lose weight. And, and I got that, guys. Everyone wants to lose weight, but you're not going to get anywhere if you don't get smart about it, meaning specifics, okay? Um, where it says here, number one, specific. State exactly what you want to accomplish. You have to be 100% clear on just lower my phone right there. Clear on what you want to accomplish. I want to accomplish dropping 30 pounds. I want to accomplish losing 3% body fat, I want to be able to accomplish what getting into a size 4 or 5 or 6 or whatever have you, okay? Make it something that's going to be specific. Don't just say, I want to do this. How, what? I want to, I want to lose weight. I want to drop body fat. That's great, guys. You want to lose weight? You know, uh, eat nothing for 5 days and, and you'll lose weight. Uh, stuff like that, you know, but make it, make, make it, make specific, measurable. Okay, demonstrating and evaluate the extent of which the goal has been met. Uh, you know, how are you going to measure your results? You know, are you going to do by, I'm going to weigh in every week, I'm going to do calipers, I, I'm, I'm either gonna, I'm going to take measurements every month or twice a month or, you know, whatever have you. I'm going to try these particular pair of pants on and every week I'm going to check to see if they get looser and looser and looser or tighter and tighter, tighter, whatever your goal is, okay? Achievable. You know, make it something that, you know, it's challenging. You know, it says challenging goals. You know, I've always found that people are very afraid to come out of their comfort zone, whether it be in the challenge or in real life. You know, you're never going to get anywhere unless you actually challenge yourself, you know. And, and, and something like a six-week, 20-pound challenge, listen, losing 20 pounds in three to four months is challenging enough. That's a challenge. Losing it in six weeks is 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 very very much a hard challenge. So think about it that way, okay? Relevant. How does the goal tie into what you want? Like how does like how will thirty pounds help you? How like losing thirty pounds help you? How will getting into a a smaller set of jeans or or dress or bikini help you? How will being able to do thirty push-ups help you? How will you know? You always got to think of how. Why, like, this is the relevant part, I'm sorry, excuse me, like, how is it aligned with your everyday life and your outlook, right? And time bound, right, 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 right. there you go, time bound, okay? Uh, give it a timeline. So, I want to lose 20 pounds by June. You know, there's more specifics into that, but that's time bound. Say, so I want to lose 20 pounds by doing this, by doing that, by doing that, and I want to hit it by June this year 
great. Now you're off to a great start. Okay, so now you know what you want to achieve, how you're going to go about doing it, and when you need to have it done by. Okay? And this is just not even fitness. This is like business in general. Like you have to have smart goals. They have to be achievable, measurable, specific, relevant, and time bound. Okay? Or else you're just throwing darts at, 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 at anything and hoping they stick. You know? So goals I hear all the time, right? I've been in this business for about six years, guys, and I've heard almost everything. And the reason, again, like I said, why most people fail, in this case, they don't have an all-in attitude, all right? They have things like this. I want to lose weight. I want to tone up. I want to tighten up my butt, arms, abs, cheekbones, whatever it is, okay? I want to build more muscle, mostly guys. You know, nothing that was t what that was said that the past four examples is a real spe is real specific. There's no timeline. There's no real commitment. So if you're not really putting your feet to the flames, you're not going to really accomplish it. Like you have to make it, like I said in the last orientation, I probably said in the orientation you guys were at, is you have to make it a must. You know, I'm not saying you have to do it forever, but you have to make it a must. Like from the time you, you, you make your mind up to the timeline you give, you have to make this goal something that you're going to work hard to achieve. And everyone can do it. You've done it before, guys. All right, so you have to make it a must in your life. Just as important as as your family, just as important as your job, you have to make this goal a must. Is it going to be easy? Hell no, it's not going to be easy. But it, it's got to come to that. It's, it's never is easy. But remember what, what lies for you at the end. So rule of thumb with smart goals. Like I said, if it doesn't make you nervous or scared, then it's not a goal worth making. Like if it doesn't really get you a little nervous as far as if you can achieve this or not, then it's not a goal that you're gonna gonna work hard to achieve. Like you have to come across the goal as do or die. Like another thing Tony Robbins says, she says, if you want to take the island, you have to burn your bridges. Or you burn your boats. I'm sorry, excuse me. I can't remember which one, but you know, one of his sayings was if you want to take the fucking island, and exactly how he says it, burn your boats. Because if you do have that do or die attitude where you cannot go back, where you cannot retail, cannot retreat, then you're going to be successful because you're going to have that all in attitude. Okay? It must bring you outside your comfort zone. There you go. Like I said, you have to get uncomfortable if you want results. Any person in any portion of life, any aspect of life, whether it be your life or their life, if they want to achieve something, they got uncomfortable. They studied extra hard for college students. They worked extra hours in the job. They... You know, sacrifice the weekends with the buddies in order to get to a weight loss goal. You know, I mean, it, it, you got just because you're not in a challenge doesn't mean you don't have anything to aim for. You get time to relax. You know, yeah, there's a little time to relax, but you know, you always got to be aiming for something because if you don't, then you're not gonna really achieve anything. And the second thing, the last thing is you must not lack conviction. Like you have to be focused and set on I'm gonna achieve this. I will do it because there's no turning back, okay? And set your mind to it. So an example of a smart goal, I want to lose 20 pounds or 8 inches off my body. I put two two examples, but, you know, normally take your pick. Off my body in three months because I want to look good for my summer vacation. See, relevant. How's, how is losing 20 pounds going to help you? I will do this by sticking to a solid nutrition plan every day and by weighing measuring myself every two weeks to check progress. Good. See? has every aspect in it. it, has why it's relevant for you to lose 20 pounds, time bound, three months, right? How much you want to lose specific, and how you're gonna achieve, how you're gonna measure progress every two weeks by weighing in and measuring myself. Bam, there you go. Okay? <clears throat> Very easy. So one paragraph. Now here's what I want you guys to do. And I do want you guys to do this, write down some homework. I even gave this to the um, people at the seminar was I want you guys to write down your SMART goal, okay? Write it down. Physically, take a minute or five or ten, however long it takes you, either tonight or tomorrow, but do it. This is how it's going to stick in your head. Make it believable, okay? Make it a goal that is going to happen. You know, it may take you out of comfort zone and you have to work hard for it, but it's going to happen. Don't, don't come up with, I want to lose 100 pounds in by like, by like January, okay? That, that's not going to happen. Even if you do really like, I mean, yeah, if you're doing a back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back -to -back challenges, yes, that will happen. But, I mean, write it something to where you can sustain 
the results and actually work hard towards the results. Okay, make it believable. Make it something like 30 pounds. Actually, even make it like this. 20 pounds by June or July is not outside the realm of belief, uh, of uh, reality. Okay, you may have to work a little harder. It's a big goal still, but it can happen. All right. Now, don't, now that I just made that an example. If that's not your goal, then that's not your goal. Write down what your goal is, but make it believable. Make it something you truly want to achieve, okay? Again, like I just said, I don't care what your goal is, okay? It is your goal. If you want to make it, then I will help do everything in my power to make help you achieve it, okay? But it has to be something you, you want to aim for and you want to do. I, the, Please don't do, do me a favor and don't ask me what should my goal be. I don't know what your goal should be. I can tell you what I think you should do, but if you don't think it's it's right for you, then make a goal on your own. Okay? I you I I you I can't tell you my goal because it doesn't apply to you. Okay? Make it big, aim high, M make it a big goal. Like I said, 20 pounds, June, July, that's a big goal. That's four or five months down the road. Okay? 20 pounds, that's a lot. That's good. But that's a good goal. It can happen if you bring, if you bust your butt. Okay? And carry it on you. Here's an important part, guys. Carry it on you. Carry this piece of paper. It ain't got to be a very big piece of paper. It could be a little sticky note. could be a small piece of paper you ripped off the back of a, 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 t a tab of paper or whatever it is. And carry it on you, okay? The reason for that is so that you can look towards it when you need to. When, when you have, like, moments of, of weakness or you really want to go do something you know you shouldn't that might set you back a couple days and your nutrition you know just pull it out say hey look listen I'm trying to aim for this I can't do that right now I gotta I gotta just knuckle down a little bit all right okay now listen to is where you're currently at now right so if you just got off a challenge or recently got off a challenge in the past couple months you're in a pretty good spot okay here's the thing you your mindset is already set up for success because I've I, I pretty much told you guys about that your mindset has to be strong. And, it, and if you've done great on the challenges or even great losing weight on your own, you know, your mind, you're, you already have your mind set. You know, you want to do it. You want to succeed and you'll let nothing stop you. Okay. You guys, most, most of the part, you guys are training three to five days a week. That's awesome. Consistent weight loss eating habits. You know, some, some people have it. Some people don't. Okay. If you just go off the challenge, you already have eating habits in place. If those, if you haven't been on a challenge in a while and you still have eating habits in place, great. If you have no type of crazy eating habits in place, then we need to tech talk about that, all right? Check progress regularly. I always open up the weigh-ins every two weeks, all right? I just opened it up this Sunday. The next one will be in a couple weeks on a Saturday. You know, don't leave it up to me to just check, you know, to, uh, to don't leave it up to just chance that you may be succeeding. You know, I also do measurements once a month. If you don't want to do the weigh-ins, we can do measurements every two weeks or a month or whatever have you, okay? But you have to check the progress regularly. You have to get in it, all right? You have to face it. Even though you don't like it, you're not going to know if you're going anywhere if you don't check the progress and we don't adjust as needed, all right? Support those around you to be better and strive for success. Listen, this isn't a game that you have to play on your own. You know, we're all here for you. I'm here for you. My other coaches are here for you, and not only that, you have a great support system with all the other uh, members of the of the, the Iron World Fit family. Okay, they'll help. Believe me, most of the times they've been where you're at, or they're there now. So ask for help. They're all here for you. <coughs> Consistently learn. Listen, I'm always learning about nutrition stuff, about you know exercise stuff, about business stuff. You know, the learning never stops, guys, okay? And don't always just take my word blindly for it, you know? Do research, you know? If you think something I said is kind of a little crazy or something that you heard about on the news or on, on you know, some type of crazy fitness site is crazy, you know, look into it. You know, look into the research. You know, it's the only way you're going to learn and find out what's real and what's not, okay? So just learn. Don't just take things always at, at verbatim, you know? And stay disciplined. I'm not saying you have to stay strict, crazy, insane, disciplined, like you can't have any fun in your life. That's not what I'm saying. But make sure you have your goal in mind and you start aiming, keep aim, aiming towards that goal. Okay? So how do you keep moving forward with weight loss from a challenge? 
Okay, just stay consistent. It's number one. Don't quit. Remember what you're here for. Number two is be patient. Sustainable fat loss takes time. And when I sustain, say sustainable, I'm saying like not rapid, of course, okay? Meaning that it'll take like normally anywhere from half a pound to one and a half pound a week loss is good. That's normal weight loss. Okay, I know you guys, a lot of you guys are used to the three to four to six to eight pounds and everything in a week. Get your mind away from that, okay? Because that's not going to be working for you anymore. You're not going to have those big jumps anymore, okay? And nor should you, all right? Like I said, the big reason for the challenge was big, big results, small amount of time. And make it more enjoyable. Build your plan around your life. This is very important. Build your plan around your life. Listen, guys. No one here is a pro athlete, even me, okay? We don't live, eat, and breathe exercise. It's not the only thing we got to do We got to do in the day is work out. I wish. That would be great for me. But some people are not like that. Most of you guys have kid, a, a child or kids, husband or wife. You know, you have a job or two jobs or stuff where, you, where, where your energy is taxed elsewhere. Okay, and you can't just like drop everything just to eat, just to down a protein shake. It doesn't work that way anymore. Okay, that's why you have to make your meal plan around your life. Well, we'll get to that later. And it should be enjoyable. It should be. You shouldn't be on a nutrition plan and it sucks. I mean, yes, there's a little sacrifice. You know, you can't do some of the things you wanted to. You can't go out and drink with your buddies every every time anymore. You can't go out and have that glass of wine every day. You know, all that stuff. Or a couple glasses of wine every day, but you can make the make the process a bit more enjoyable than what it was. You don't have to stay strict on a challenge diet no more. There's no need for that. You're in real life now. Okay. Okay. So real quick, guys, you all know this, but I just want to reiterate what this what the point of the challenge was. Okay, it was intended for to give people an awesome experience and show them that it can be done. All you have to do is follow the, follow the instructions and get to work. Okay, and you guys have seen when you guys put your mind to mind to where it needs to be, it can happen. <clears throat> Give people their sexy back and help them achieve their dreams of a better health and a better body. Done. Okay, a lot of people say they wanted their weight back, they wanted their old clothes back, and they and for the most part, most of them got it. Marketing rapid weight loss results. That's more from my end. Okay, I I wanted to be I wanted my company to be the place where everyone went to for fat loss transformations and. So far, I'm doing a pretty good job of it, okay? And also increase company exposure and become the go-to place for solid, no, B, no BS results. Like I said again, okay? So that's the main reason of the challenge. It was never meant, no, let me get there. However, the challenge does have a, a, a dark side. See, we have cookies. <laughs> like that. But there is a small dark side of the challenge, okay? And a lot of you guys have told me about this, and I want to address it right now. Kind of like the 600-pound gorilla in the room. Okay, three of the biggest downsides, <coughs> excuse me, the challenge diet is it creates a mental and emotional barrier towards eating regular food again. A lot of times, people are very, very scared of bringing regular food back into their diet because they're afraid of a crazy influx of weight gain. Like they see, they think if they eat a cheesecake, they're going to gain all that weight back that they lost, which will not happen. It's almost impossible to eat very little good, uh, dirty food. And gain all that weight back. Okay? Makes former challengers afraid of rapid weight gain. Again, they are afraid of anything outside of normal than challenge diet, and they're gonna gain weight. And that's not true. Demonizes all food unless they are on the list. Alright. Again, like I said, the reason why the why all the foods on the list were on the list was because those are the ones that create the biggest results. Okay? Like I said again, fruit is not bad for you. Wine is not bad for you. In small doses, it's not bad for you. Alcohol is not bad for you in small doses. Donuts, cookies, cake, small doses, that stuff is not bad for you whatsoever. You guys can have it again. Okay? Because you cannot eat like a challenge all the time. It doesn't work. It's not going to work for you. So you have to bring that regular food back in. See? Just like I said. The challenge, at least the nutrition part, was never meant to be a prolonged way of life. Only long enough to be able to get to an optimal healthy body weight and have the ability to maintain that body weight and keep the healthy eating habits throughout your life. You eventually have to get back to regular eating. See this part? You eventually have to get back to regular eating. You have to get back there. 
You can't do the challenge diet for the rest of your life. It's not going to work. It's going to have negative effects. All right. So if you're still using a challenge diet, you need to bring regular stuff back. I'm going to show you how in a minute. Okay. So to be honest, 65% of people who partake in a severely restrictive diet gain their weight back within three years, if not more. That is fact. Okay, a lot of times, if you want to think about it, think of the biggest loser. All those crazy people that lost 50, 60, 70, 100 pounds, something like that, in the few months that they did the biggest loser. A lot of times, they'll, those people gain that weight back again because it's really restrictive. They weren't taught how to eat, and then they gain their weight back. And then they just, they're just let out to the masses, which I think is, like, insane. Like, if I was able to lock you all up for six weeks, I bet every one of you guys would be losing 20 pounds in six weeks without a problem. But again, that's not real life. We're talking about real life here, okay? I mean, this happens because mainly people gorge on foods, and they don't have proper nutrition plan. They don't get proper nutrition, uh, nutrition uh, um, schooling or, or education. And even if they do, it's bare minimum. They don't. I don't think they teach them how to come up with a nutrition plan and how to, you know, adjust that plan based on your results. Or another reason, which is the worst reason whatsoever. They stop the plan working out completely and expect to retain the same results after a challenge. They don't stay, stay consistent or dedicated. Like some people, they'll do a challenge and then they'll leave. It's happened. Um, I have some people now that did a challenge and they left. You know, and that's fine. That that's that's their choice. But then what happens is they realize is that when there's no no plan in place, no backup plan in place. They're going to gain all that weight back or they're going to gain a good amount of that weight back if they stop working on they don't have any type of plan B in place for their nutrition. It happens every time, okay, because they get whatever reason they had to stop and, and their, their reasons are the reasons, but they don't do anything. They're not working out as hard. They're not staying consistent with the training plan or they're not holding, holding themselves accountable, you know. That's what really makes the difference. They don't have anyone holding them accountable. So... They fall by the wayside. Okay. So honestly, start telling yourself this stuff. All right? It's okay to eat regular food again. It really is. It's okay to bring that regular stuff back in here. It's okay to go out and eat with the family and friends. It is. All right? Don't be that person that says that, you get that, 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 well, I'm on a challenge diet and I can't eat this and I can't eat that. And you're that person sitting there eating a salad and grilled chicken while everyone else is chowing down on wings or... Or, or a burger with some fries. You know, listen, if you've done well with your nutrition during the week and, and you've been pretty strict and, and you've, you know, really earned your cheat meal, you don't have it. Go out and enjoy yourself, okay? you got to enjoy yourself in life. Next thing is, okay, to have a glass of wine or beer, not with every meal, all right? Just want to make sure that you guys don't go crazy with the alcohol. I know I have some people that love wine and love beer, and that's great, okay? But... Again, small doses. All right? It's okay. Cool? All right, bring it back. So now, here's a question I get all the time. How do I bring back all those calories that I used to eat or regular food I used to eat without getting all that weight back? All right, and my thing is you have to do it slowly, very slowly, okay? A little bit at a time, okay? What's going to happen is you're going to eat more, you're going to ramp your metabolism up again, and you're going to burn body fat, more body fat in the process. All right? So you have to bring calories back slowly because if you bring them back all in at once, that's what leads to bloating, that's what leads to excess water weight gain, and that's what leads to fat gain, okay? And that is where people go wrong. They bring calories back all at once. They stay on that type of grazing and binging diet, or that's not even a diet, just binging, for weeks and months, and then they're, they're, they're back to their almost original weight again, and they wonder why. Well, you didn't put things back in slowly, you didn't take your time, you didn't allow the process to happen, and you got them impatient, and that's why it happened, okay, so number one, or at least lesson three is, you know, don't overthink the details, you know, how many meals can I have, what can I have, what about stuff on a challenge list, you know, listen, keep everything basic, okay, guys, don't overcomplicate the process, just eat more, a little bit more time, then a little bit more time, good stuff, clean stuff, a little more time, have a little bit of fun with your food, okay, and just bring calories back in. That's all you have to do. That is it. It is that simple, okay? Remember this. When a confused mind shuts down, it inhibits growth, meaning that you won't learn anything, all right? You have to not confuse yourself. Very, very easy. 
So, very good question. How much should I be eating? So first, what the question is, is how many calories should you be eating? I'm going to get to that right now, but basically, just a quick explanation of what calorie balance is. It's the most important variable in body composition diet success, whether you want to gain weight, you want to lose weight, whatever it is, okay, whether you want to maintain your weight, it doesn't matter. You have to know how many calories you need to main, to get to that goal. It has the greatest impact on how much muscle you can gain and how much fat you can lose over any period of time. So basically, listen, if you're not getting enough calories, your body is going to do absolutely nothing, or it might be the opposite. If you're trying to lose weight, your body might start gaining weight, okay, because if you're not putting those calories back in, your body is going to start holding on to everything it can, all right? So you have to bring calories back in, know how many calories you need for fat loss, and start working from there, all right? So how to find your caloric intake or your caloric requirements, okay? First thing is your basal metabolic rate. Basically, your bat, the number of calories your body would theoretically burn every day if you didn't do anything. Okay? Like nothing. Alright? You're just sitting on the couch, watching Oprah, or watching The View, or watching whatever you're watching on TV, or doing nothing. And you're not exercising, you're not doing anything like that, and that's your basal metabolic rate. How many calories your body would need? Okay? Or burn, excuse me. So now, need your BMI calculator. Alright? So actually, you can go here. BMI calculator.net, BMR calculator. It's very, very easy, guys. All you gotta do is go to this website, put your age, height, weight, sex, and there you go. You got your BMR, your basal metabolic rate. Okay, so now what I want you to do, if you have a pen and paper, get it out now. I want you to start writing this stuff down. Okay, so number one, whatever you got from the BMR calculator, when the age, height, weight, sex, and everything was accounted for. And whatever number you got, I want you to put that number down on the paper, okay? And make sure you keep it in a place where you're going to find it easily, all right? Because it's going to be very, very important here on out. Now, here's the thing, guys. I'm about to get into some math, okay? Do try to keep, do try to pay attention to what's going on. If you have to at this point, rewind the video. If you, uh, well, going forward, rewind the video. Make sure you, you, you understand what's going on. Or email, all right. But for the purposes of the video, I'm gonna go over how you come up with your what your calories and macros for what you need, all right. But just pay attention, bear with me. Or I'll try and make this as easy as possible, and don't freak out, okay. When I did this on Wednesday, last Wednesday, I had like a couple breakdowns and everything of people, all right. So listen, this stuff is very easy. It's just basic math, and there's no type of magic to it, all right. So just make sure you guys are kind of paying attention first. Okay, so now what you're going to what we're going to work out first is how to get your maintenance calories and your fat loss calories. Okay, these are calories you know you have to hit every single day consistently in order to burn body fat. Those are your fat loss calories. Your maintenance calories is any calories you want to keep your current weight. Okay, I didn't do any type of weight gain or build or 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 mass building calories because not many people here are going to build. Are wanting to build mass. Y'all don't want to. Y'all are wanting to get toned, lose weight, keep your weight you got, whatever it is. Okay, and I'm going to show you how you guys to do that. So now, a lot of it from here is based on your activity rate. Okay, so you see different numbers here. All right, one point one point two, which means a sedentary. You don't do anything. You don't exercise. You don't go out. Basically, you just barely move. Okay. Lightly active, light exercise, sports one to three times a week, all right? So if you come in like, you know, once, twice a week, this is where you want your calories to be. So you want to take your BMR, okay, the, 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 the one we got in the first time, and you want to multiply it by 1.375, okay? And when you get that, circle that number, start, whatever you got to do, and hold it to the side, right? Write, cal write maintenance calories, okay? Maintenance calories. So most of you guys are be right around here, 1.5. Okay, reason being is you guys come here three to five. I'm, I see most of y'all three to five days a week. And I know the exercises, the training is pretty intense. So you guys are probably going to start right up in this area, 1.55. So you want to take your BMR and multiply it by 1.55. Again, star it, circle it, whatever you got to do. And those are your maintenance calories. That's if you do. Not wanted to lose weight, not wanted to gain weight, that's what you got. 
Okay? Now, the very, very hardcore people, the very rare hardcore people, okay, come, come and see me six days a week, like every day training is available. All right? And you want to do 1.725. Also, uh, yeah, there we go. Yep, right there. 1.725. Okay? There you go. Cool? Now you take a BMR, whatever you got for a BMR, and multiply it by that. All right, extra active. So if you have very hard exercise, if you come in, you train, you train a lot, like five, six, seven days a week, and you have a very physical job, or two times a week, two times a day training, two times a day training, you want to divide by 1.9. That's not very many of you, okay? Um, but for the ones that, you know, come and see me four, five, sometimes even six days a week, and your job, like construction or, you know, something where you're working out a lot or moving very, very fast a lot or often throughout the day, yeah, you want to be higher calories. Now, the reason is for these higher BMRs, the higher, the, the more exercise you go is so that, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, is that you're burning more calories throughout the day at each level. Kind of makes sense. Kind of common sense. It's really common sense, but I just thought I'd put that out there. All right, so if you're exercising one to three times a week, okay, this is what you got. As Because when you exercise three to five times a week, you're going to need more calories in order to build muscle and repair muscle, okay, and burn body fat. So that's why the numbers are higher the higher you go. More demand on the body, you need more fuel. You need more, you need more uh, calories, all right? And remember, guys. Whatever you got from your BMR times one point whatever is your maintenance calories. Again, that's not if you want to lose weight. That's not if you want to gain weight. That's if you want to keep at your current weight. Okay, so if you want to keep at your current weight, you stay there. All right, don't worry about the next slide, and you just wait for us to catch. You wait for us to catch up to you on the slide after the next one. Okay. Okay, so real quick, everybody. Now, if you want to start dropping weight. All right, now I did this as my example, okay? My BMR is 20.173, 17.3, okay? I train about three to five days a week, more on the five days a week side, all right? And I multiply by 1.55. Now, these are my maintenance calories. Again, maintenance, that's if I do not want to drop body weight. That's if I do not want to gain weight. That's if I want to stay exactly where I'm at. But I'm after fat loss, so I want to get my butt in a... Uh, to a lower weight class for my next meet, and also I want to look good on the beach. Yeah, I'm a little vain, so what? All right, so I'm going to subtract 500 calories from my maintenance. So 500 calories from 31.26. Cool. Now, right here is what I got: 26.26 calories. Okay. Now, 2626 calories is my new fat loss caloric intake. That means this is where I start at, not remain. Start here. For my fat, for my caloric intake, all right. That's really not a lot of calories, guys. It's really, it's really not. It may seem like a lot, but it's really not a lot of calories. Believe me. Okay, so now I'll get to what we do with people or what I do with people with um very, 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 very. Uh, you know what I'll say now. People that are already lean or very or thin and they want to drop some more body weight and get more tone, I wouldn't probably put them in. 500 calories to start with, okay? So I would just probably half this to 250 from whatever their maintenance cal calories were, and I do do it that way, and I cut them back slowly, okay? Because if I drop 500, it might be a bit too aggressive for people, and they might drop too much weight too quick, and then hit a metabolic slowdown way earlier than they need to, all right? And we don't want that. We want to try and get, we want to try and get in the groove, maintain the the, the weight loss steadily and keep it going all right so but anyway most people are going to be in the 500 cool all right so now remember what we just hit 26 26 or whatever your cat fat loss calories were i want you to put that in there on a piece of paper star it circle it put fat loss calories okay fl calories fat loss calories whatever you got to do to make sure you remember that and make sure you have you have that available for when we start to get more into it Okay, guys, because now we're going to get into macros, and this is where it could get a little tricky for some people. 
all right? But make sure you know your fat loss calories right here. Got it? All right. Good. So now, protein. Now, before we get into what the macro numbers are, each, each macro does something different. You have three, actually four macros. You have protein, carbs, fats, and alcohol, right? Although alcohol really doesn't do much as far as weight loss. But we'll get to that later. So now, basically, proteins. When you're trying to burn body fat and build muscle, protein is king, okay? Protein is the main driver of muscle building. Reason being is because it builds and repairs muscle from muscle breakdown after a workout. Amino acids reduce further muscle breakdown from hard exercise, meaning that the amino acids you find in meat, like chicken, fish, beef, pork, eggs, whatever, okay? Lean animal proteins have an amino acid profile that actually aids in repairing uh, broken down muscles, okay? So it's very, very important. If you're looking to build muscle, burn fat, this is where you need to have a good amount of, okay? <clears throat> um, there's also vegan proteins out there for any vegans. I, I can't remember if I have any. I don't think I have any in, 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 in clients, but there are also vegan proteins out there. Now, you must know going into it, all right? If you are a vegetarian or a vegan or you prefer vegan proteins other than other than, than, than um pure animal proteins, you're going to have a harder time burning weight, burning body fat and building building muscle because plant proteins and vegetable proteins are incomplete, meaning they don't have the same amino acid profile that is required to build muscle. Okay, so I'm not saying that's impossible, but you're going to have a harder time building muscle and burning fat without the incomplete proteins. You might have to take like a, brand, a, a branch chain amino acid supplement or some type of supplement or stack a bunch of, of vegetable proteins on top of another so that you get a complete amino acid breakdown, uh, amino acid profile, okay? All right, so moving on. Carbs, main fuel of the body, age, okay, because it's called glycogen or glucose, all right? Glycogen is what stores the, uh, which is what runs the body and runs the brain to make it, to make it you know, work right, basically, all right? Age and recovery, like it helps rebuild, not, kind of, not so much the muscle breakdown, but it helps replenish your energy stores. Your body runs off of glycogen, sugar, carbohydrates, all right? So in order to actually make your body recover faster from a workout or a training session, you have to have your carbohydrates in there, okay? Improve that leg performance and fat loss. Again, for fat loss, your body needs carbs. Trust me, guys, I've been through the whole ketogenic diet, which is when you have low carbs, high fats, high, uh, little, minor, uh, uh, medium proteins. It's great fat loss. Don't get me wrong. You get results. But if you're a sedentary person, that's what it, who it works for. Okay? It doesn't work as well for physically active people. And I'll be honest, training when you don't have carbs sucks, especially for me. I power lift. It absolutely sucks when you have no energy and you got to put a couple hundred pounds on your back and squat. It's not right. It's terrible. Okay? Hence why your body needs carbohydrates. You'll notice, guys, if you don't eat carbs all day, if you don't eat anything all day, have some carbs, have like a couple pieces of bread or, or, or some rice or some pasta before you come to train. And you'll notice that, like, wow, you automatically have a bunch of energy or you are coming from a low-carb diet and you're putting – Solely putting carbo carbohydrates back in, you'll notice a huge uptick in energy and performance in the gym or in class. All right, almost instantaneously because your body now has fuel to uh, to to run off of. Okay, now fats also important, not as important as carbs or protein, but they're important as well. Okay, they aid in hormonal balance. They regulate hormonal balance, aids in inflammation, meaning that your joints and your tendons don't get inflamed because of all the work you're putting on it keeps the joints loose and tendons healthy. All right, so fats are very, very important. Now, here, thermic effect of food is basically just how much energy or calories is used to digest, absorb, and mobilize food nutrients to where they need to go. All right, so basically we're going to break down, get into breakdown of how many ca protein, cal protein uh, calories, excuse me, are in each macronutrient. So. Four calories per gram of protein, meaning that in order to burn or use one gram of protein, it takes four calories to metabolize that gram of protein. Same thing with carbs. These two are the same. 
okay? Fat is nine, so it takes a bit more calories to burn fat, which is why fat is the more expendable of the three macronutrients, okay? And alcohol. Alcohol is a macronutrient, but again, not recommended for as a source of fat loss, but that's seven, all right? Again, have, have alcohol every now and then, but don't rely on it for fat loss. No good. Cool? All right, so now, listen, guys. Now we're going to get into how to set up your macronutrients, okay? Now, when you're trying to track macronutrients, meaning how many carbs, protein, and fats you need a day, you want to do it in grams, cool? You need to do it in grams, so it's easier to track that way. If you're going to track, try and track 1,000 calories in protein, good luck, all right? That's going to be very, very tough, all right? However, when you break it down in grams... It makes everything a lot easier, okay? So, now, good rule of thumb is, for protein, is 0.7 to 1.25 grams of body weight a day. This is per day, per day, okay? The old bro science, meaning for the guys you might see at the gym, they'll say you need at least one gram of protein per body weight. Not really, okay? You don't need as much as you think. Like, some guys will say two grams. You can't even digest two grams of, uh, of protein per pound of body weight a day. So your body's not going to digest it all. It's going to, you know, waste it all. Get rid of it in waste, okay? So, at the highest level, you want 1.25. And again, that's if you're really lean and you need more calories, cool? But most people start at the low end. I start people at the low end and you, we build up. So, 0.7, so what I want you to do is I want you to take your current body weight, current body weight right now and multiply it by 0.7 now whatever number you get and that's your grams of protein per day so let's re real quick 200 grams I'm sorry excuse me 200 pounds I go for one one gram equals 200 grams per day all right I didn't put it out here I'm sorry about that but 200 pounds equals 200 grams per day of protein I need to eat that's really not a lot it may sound like a lot but it's really not okay so I want you to start at 0.7 and multiply that by your body weight. And whatever you get is your grams of protein per day. So I want you to take that number, circle it, start, write protein grams per day, and leave that off to the side, okay? Because it's going to come into play later. Cool? Awesome. All right. So now let's get into fats. Now, your fats, okay? We're going to do fats before carbohydrates, and I'm going to explain why. Because we need to know, basically... Let's go to fats, all right? 30% to 40%. Now, that all depends on if you prefer carbs or you prefer more fatty foods, okay? Do you prefer donuts or do you prefer bacon? Listen, you can't have both, guys, okay? That's where people run into problems. They try to have donuts and the bacon, and that's how they gain all that weight back and they get fat in the first place, okay? So, one at a time. If you're a more carby person like me, I am half Italian and half Puerto Rican. I love carbs, okay? Rice, pasta, donuts, love it, okay? I'm a fat kid at heart. So I would go for 30% of my total fat loss calories. Now, you remember the calories you had first off, right? Whatever, let's go back real quick. Let's, 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 let's revisit this. Now, fat loss calories, remember, was your maintenance calories, whatever you got from your BMR times whatever your, whatever your activity level was, right? That was your maintenance calories. Now, remember, if you were not very, very lean, you subtracted 500. So whatever your fat loss calories were, you're going to take 30% to 40% from this, okay? This number here. So I would take 0.30% from 2626. Okay, now let's move forward. Um, I know my math is wrong on this. I don't know why I had 2,000. It was an old example. I should have had 26, 26, but you guys are going to get the point right here. So you would take your, if, if you're on a carby side, you would take 30. Okay, I'm on a carby side, like I said, but you are whatever. If you're fatty, you would do 40. All right, if you like more bacon and more, more butter, you would do more of the fatty stuff. Okay, so you would take 2,000 fat loss calories. Multiply it by 0 0.30. Now, you're a fat loss calorie. Well, they are. I put 2,000 here times 0 0.30 equals carby. And that is 600 calories. Again, 
We're trying to accommodate for grams. Now, 600 calories is great. That's how many calories are needed for uh, our fat. But we're not trying to get calories, we're trying to get grams. Correct? So again, you would divide your calories by 9 because it takes 9 calories to burn through 1 gram of fat. Okay? That's how it works. So we come up with 66. Now that is 66 grams per day of fat. Understood? Okay, now I want you to put 66, circle it start, put fat grams per day, and leave it off to the side. Okay, so now we're going to get into a little bit more math. Guys, I hope you're not confused by now. If you are, let me know. Email me, text me, whatever you guys got. Well, don't text, but email me. Hit me up on Facebook. I'll help you guys throughout the way. Okay, but actually, right now, I hope no one's, everyone pretty much gets it. Okay, so now moving forward. Now, Carbs are basically what's left once you get your fat and your protein, okay? That's just how it is. It's a lot easier to figure it out that way, okay? You can do the old 2 grams of carbs per pound of body weight and 1.5 and all that stuff. You can do that. I like this way a little better because at least you know you're more accurate, okay? It may all come out to the same thing at the end, but, you know, I don't mind doing the extra work personally to find out whether I'm right or not, Okay? All right, so again, you're going to take the total required calories, fat loss. Again, we're going to 2626, 26, right? Fat loss. That's what I'm doing. Okay, well, again, okay, let's just say it's 2,000. I don't know why I have 2,000 up there, but whatever. Okay, and subtract from the total number of calories from protein and fats combined. So, you see a 600 and you see an 800, okay? Here's why we have those numbers. 600 as we found out, was 30% of your fat loss calories, right? Because you're a carb person, 30% of carbs from 2,000 is 600 calories, correct? Amazing. So now we use those calories and we start with fat. Now remember, now we go on to protein. Protein is 800. Now why is it 800? Because, again, we're finding out for total calories, of protein and fat. So we found out for fats, we multiplied by 9 and we come in with that. And now we're multiplying by 4. So we're going to multiply the grams we have per day, 200. And remember, calories per gram is 4. So we're going to multiply these two and come up with 800. Okay? <coughs> so now, which gives us 4. Now we're going to add the 2. 1400 calories. Now, this is from protein and fat combined. We haven't figured out carbs yet, but we're about to in a second. So, now you're going to take the total required fat loss calories, fat loss calories, and subtract whatever you got from adding your protein and fat combined. Okay? Remember, the calories. We're trying to get the grams, not the calories. So, now I took 2000 because those, those are what I have for fat loss calories, and I subtracted by 1400 which is the fat and the protein calories combined, and I got 600, okay? So again, 600 is the total calories we need for carbs. Got it? But again, we're not trying to find out calories. It's easier for us to find out about carbs. So listen, 600 divided by 4 equals 150 grams of carbs per day. Because again, just like protein, there are 4 calories per gram of carb that, that are burned in order to use. Okay, so there's your carbs. So in the end, <clears throat> now I get to my actual weight, fat loss calories. Sorry, guys. My actual fat loss calories are 26, 26. Okay, so now I'm going, now the reason you see from here to here is because I'm going from 0.7 for grams of protein to 1 gram. Okay, I'm going to, my range would be anywhere from 154 all the way to 220 grams. Okay. Off of 226, doing all that math. Again, if I'm a, more of a carby person, I'm gonna have 66 grams. If I'm more of a fat person, like I like I like my bacon, which I do, but I can't have both. I'm gonna have 88 grams of fat off of 2626. Okay. Now, whatever your fat loss calories are, these are what you're gonna read. And again, 
Now, 350. Now, again, remember, before I didn't do it right, but I had 354 grams of carbs, which really is not a lot. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a moderate amount. And 14, 418 grams. Okay? So that's my range. This is what I would have me personally in order to burn fat. Again, this is just a starting point. Okay? When it comes down to it, I would, in order to keep burning body fat, I would cut fat and I would cut some carbs as I go along. Okay? Gradually. Not all at once, but gradually. Over couple weeks time period all right again slow gradual progress okay actually let me go back real quick now people want to ask when you cut and when you cut calories and everything it all depends on you now what I tell people is don't touch any of your calories until you notice that you're not losing weight or measurements anymore okay so if it's two weeks you're still losing weight on a calorie count stay with it Okay, if it's three weeks and you lost and you stop losing weight, then it's time for a calorie cut. Okay, it's a very small calorie cut. It's not a lot. Sometimes going too drastic, like if you cut 100 to 200 calories, that's pretty drastic. Okay, I'm talking like something like no more than 100, which will nine times out of ten, which will shake fat loss, start getting you losing body fat again. Okay, but if you don't know about that, ask me. All right, I'll help you. So now. Moving on. Holy crap, there's no way I can eat that much. Well, at first, you're absolutely right. No, probably not. If you see somewhere around 230 grams of carbs to 300, or you're seeing upwards to like 95 to 150 grams of protein, yeah, I can understand how be, it could be a little intimidating. But again, you're not required to do it all at once, okay? You do it slowly. What's going to happen is your body will adjust to the rate. Okay, so it will adjust its calories, build its build the metabolism up more efficiently so that it can start burning all those extra calories you're bringing it effectively. Okay, so like I said, the problem runs into when people actually bring the stuff up all at once and they get fat, they get bloated, they get, you know, angry because they gain all this weight back and it could have been avoided if they just do it slowly. Okay, and again, what's gonna, what a lot of times what happens is when people add calories slowly, like I said again before a couple slides ago, is their body actually reacts better, and a lot of times it will keep burning body fat or help you lose body weight even though you're adding calories, because now your body has more calories to burn, can run more efficiently, and it actually can can um, improve performance a lot better. Okay, so add it back slowly. Normally, uh, I think I have it in the later slide, but now I'll make sure I go back, all right? Um, but you want to add calories back in slowly. So here's an example, okay? We're going to get the challenge plans right now. I'm going to make sure I explain the challenge plan. So a lot of you guys have this, and I just picked a female AM training plan just because I did, all right? Now, you see this is mainly what most people eat right here, okay? All right? So now, you, if this is what you just got off of, it's great, okay, guys. This is a challenge plan. This is great. This is what got you your results. But this is just should just be a starting point. Now, from here on out, okay. If you stop losing weight from this, or if you've been on a couple weeks and you stop losing weight, then it's time to change something up. So you have somewhere in here, you have to add some calories in, okay. So as an example, what I would say is I would start with my maybe my. It's, let's see, female AM training. I would start with pre post workout meal. Okay. So, something as far as instead of eating one and a half slices of Ezekiel toast, I would have two slices. Or I would have maybe a three quarters of a cup of cooked oatmeal or cream of rice. Something like that. Okay. I would maybe have a egg yolk in here. So, it would be four whites and one, and one yellow. Okay. Adding a little bit of fat in there. That's great. That's a good start. That's adding calories. So right there, you probably added a good 50 to 75 calories. Okay? And again, you still have all this stuff that you can eat. Okay? Go slow. There's no rush, guys. Okay? And then a week after that, I would probably add something. Once this is consistent, I would add possibly something to meal three a few hours later. So I would probably have maybe some... 
like a half a cup of rice with my greens and my cauliflower, my broccoli, or whatever I'm eating. Okay, half a cup. That's roughly about cooked. That's roughly about 40 to 50 grams of car, 30 to 40 grams of carbs. That's great. That's about another 100 calories right there. Boom. There you go. And you see, you're building your body up more to run more efficiently, to burn more calories, and to use those calories as fuel. So slowly, you're doing it, not adding it all at once. Like I'm, like you shouldn't be adding, you know, piece of fruit here. Three more eggs here, another half a slice here, and all this in one week, okay? Add something small each week. That's how you win, guys, okay? All right, so now moving forward. Now, quick breakdown of all the plans. Mostly women's plan, and this is a challenge plan, is 13 to 1,500 calories, all right? I mapped it out normally 13 to 1,500 to 1,500 calories, which is low. Guys, 16 to 1,800, normally that's low too, okay? Calories. Again, if you guys want a little thing, want to uh, want to help yourselves out, figure out your grams of protein, fat, and carbs from the challenge plan. So, whatever challenge plan you have, figure out everything. Now you know what you're getting. Okay, so let's say that you put all the protein together and you're getting about 90 grams of protein a day. Whatever your um, protocol is for, actually, I'm just gonna say it. If you want to add calories, I would add carbs first because, again, those are going to give you energy. That's going to make your workouts go better, and it's easier to add carbs. Like, people like carbs better. Like, add more rice? Hell yeah, give me some. Okay, or add a little bit more pasta? Definitely. Love it. Okay, add a piece of fruit. There you go. All right, add carbs back in first. It's going to help with your energy. And when you get to your about your limit of carbs as far as, like, fat loss, then you add something else small back in. Okay? All right. So, here's a good resource, calorieking.com. It will help you figure out your macros because all you got to do is type in four egg whites. And it'll come up with the calories, the macros, the protein, the fat, and everything for four egg whites, what it is. Okay, or egg whites, and you just scroll down to the quantity you need, four or ounces or whatever it is. Okay, very easy to figure out. Just got to do a little bit of work, guys. Okay, remember, listen, if you want the results, you got to do a little bit of work for them. Cool? Okay, now, I love this one. Now, oh my God, I got to count calories. It's so time consuming. You know what? Yes, it is. But here's the thing, okay? What you don't know is you're most likely doing it anyway. Let me ask a question. How many of you guys weigh and measure your food when you're on the challenge? Okay, so if you are doing that, you're most likely counting calories anyway because you're counting how much stuff you need. So you know like what half a cup is and of rice is or you know for how to measure four ounces of beef or four ounces of chicken or three cups of veggies or whatever it is you know you're doing that already okay if you're on target and if you just go off a challenge those things are already instilled in you so you're already doing that stuff okay so it's really just a matter of now I just write the stuff down basically or log it somehow use like a my fitness pal use like a a um a spark people or lose it app or a macro app i know there's tons of them around okay very easy stuff cool but you have to do it all right do you have to do it for the rest of your life no because honestly it, it's a pain in the butt it really is okay my my suggestion is well a lot like, like i said first of all like i said you're doing it already so you might as well keep going while you have your goals in mind all right and plus the more you do it, the easier it gets. So it's actually, a lot of times it's just second nature to most people by now if you've been with me for a while. Especially if you're still doing the challenge diet, okay? Um, but honestly, do you have to do it the rest of your life? No, you don't have to do it the rest of your life. Just do it, stay constant until you hit the goal you want. And when you hit the goal you want, take a little break. You know, just get, give your mind a little bit of break and just, you know, get for another goal. But, again, if you're serious about the goal, then you have to make sure that you're getting the calories you need first. And you can't overeat and you can't undereat consistently or else you're not going to get anywhere. You're going to keep yo-yoing on your weight and you're going to get frustrated. And on your measurements, you're going to get frustrated, okay? Just stay consistent. It's tough, but, again, you guys know tough. You guys have been through it already. Okay, so basically what this kind of... Um, Method is called what I said about slowly adding calories back in. It's called reverse dieting. Okay, um, 
it's a popular term or popular way to get back into eating normal. All right, it was very, very, it's very popular with physique athletes and figure and fitness athletes because what happens is a lot of times they diet down to really, really low calories and almost no carbs, peaking for a couple weeks to a show so they can get as ripped as possible and look as good as possible on stage. And then a lot of times what happens is they rebound, you know, I mean, they, they have a horrible rebound effect. Their metabolism gets all screwed up um, and they can't get back down to as lean as they were. Or they have to do something crazy and insane and get back down to that level again once they do it. You know, I had um, had a buddy of mine whose wife did a lot of a lot of uh, figure shows and she was she was really good. But you know, I saw what she had to eat sometimes, and she was eating like damn near nothing leading up to the uh, the peak week or the, or the past two weeks of peaking, and it was terrible. You know, and then she would kill herself and gorge and everything like that, and it, that just really kind of builds an eating disorder, you know, and some people have that already and they don't need that anymore, you know, so try to like stay, so like I said, that's why I want to make sure that you guys are adding those calories back in very slowly, um, also reverse dieting allows for the body to restore a more natural and efficient metabolism, like I said, okay, it's not going to yo-yo anymore, it doesn't have to go through an extreme cut, and then extreme weight gain, and then extreme cut again just to look good on stage or look good in a bikini or whatever your goal is, all right? You do it you do it slowly and more efficient, and your metabolism is going to run more efficiently, so it doesn't even really make that big of a dent in your life, okay? It allows for healthier and more consistent mindset of nutrition. You don't get crazy with your nutrition anymore. You don't, you don't get, you know, hesitant about allowing food back into your life. Some of the foods you used to like, you don't get hesitant about it. You don't get nervous about it. You're okay with it. And it fuels better workouts. It does. Like, 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 have you ever, I'm sure some of you guys have, you guys have come in here all tired from work, probably didn't eat anything all day, and then you come into my class, and then you guys kick your butts, I kick your butts for an hour, and you feel like crap, you know? I mean, and, and, and that's sometimes the nature of the beast, and I got it, guys. We're all get busy right now and then, but, like, you guys know a workout that sucks because you didn't eat anything or you ate crappy the, the day, night before or, or the whole day, and then you eat really nice and you're on point, you're on a good day and the, the workouts are completely different. Am I right? So you guys know what the good workouts feel like after they have a plenty of enough, enough of uh, fuel. So you want to fuel your body as much as you can. Okay. So a couple links. All right. Muscle for Life. This is a good one right here. All right. This actually explains reverse dieting. Dr. Lane Norton, he is one of the guys that I follow online, one of the very few guys I follow online for nutrition. Um, he deals with a lot of figure, fitness, physique athletes, male and female. But honestly his stuff like like his 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 blog and his his um information, his research actually works for anybody trying to lose body weight, okay? It helps anyone. The the, the rules are just about the same. Um Coach Calorie, another great one for reverse dieting, okay? Healthy living, heavy lifting, another great one. Okay, so it's all the research here to look into it, see what it's like, how to actually go about it in a, in a more proper way. And hey, you might find something that I might have missed. So honestly, this is the this is the this is the stuff where you gotta like, you know, kind of learn a little bit, guys. All right, do a little bit of research, read a little, read a few things, you know, learn something. Okay. All right. So like I said, reverse starting quick start. So start adding cars back in, aim for fifty to hundred more calories per day. I said. Not all at once. I'll probably even put this at 50 to more, 50 or more calories per week. Okay, depends on how your body's reacting. Okay, start with carbs first. Always start with carbs first because you need carbs to rebuild glycogen stores and help fuel your workouts better. So you can work harder in the gym, work harder in training, and actually just get the results you want. Okay, you'll notice that you, now you will notice that you up, might be an uptick in weight and just relax. Okay, it's going. To happen, like I said, all right. It's just water weight. That's all it is. It goes away. All right. Your body gets used to it after like about a few days, maybe a week or so, and you'll be fine. Okay. Don't stress out. If you gain three pounds after you had start eating back normal again, don't just be like, oh my god, I gotta cut again. I gotta get back on a challenge diet because I gained three pounds. No, stop. It will happen. All right. Be okay with it. Calm down. It'll be all right, okay? Your body's just getting used to all those influx in calories. That's all it's doing, okay? Add calories back in until either A, 
you really start to gain most amount of weight, like 15, like 10, 15, 20 pounds, and it's not from water, it's actually body fat, okay, or you're at your fat loss calories or maintenance calories, whichever one you hit first, all right, so if you notice that your fat loss calories coincide with the challenge diet, which most of you guys probably are not, okay, eat till you hit your maintenance calories, and then when you hit your maintenance calories, and you're the consistent hitting them, then you could start cutting your calories again, okay? If you're trying to burn body fat and you're far away from your fat loss calorie requirements, increase calories to hit your fat loss calories, okay? Meaning, the to like mine were the 26, 26. If I'm not there yet, which I know I am, but if I'm not there yet, I would eat until I got to the, add calories until I got to those um, calories Make sure I'm consistent there for like about a week, okay? And then I would start slowly cutting back on calories, okay? Not drastic, 50 to 100 a week maybe, and slowly cut back, okay? Remember, listen guys, you're in for the long haul now. There's no more challenges, no more crazy stuff. You're in for the long haul, all right? So think long term. Okay, next thing, have a cheat meal, not day. Listen, I always see these... These crazy posts by people, I'm not saying anyone in particular or anyone here, but crazy posts by people, they have like, you know, they have, they for breakfast they go to IHOP and for lunch they go to like, oh Jesus, uh, uh, Outback and for dinner they go to, you know, a bar and eat bar food and then for dessert they have like three scoops of banana split ice cream or whatever you have, okay? I'm sorry if I made some of you guys hungry, but listen. Cheat meal is a meal, not a day, okay? It's not meant to last the full day. It's really not. It's meant for a one meal, or whatever meal you want, and limit it to 45 minutes. Some of you guys can pack some stuff away in 45 minutes, okay? But limit it to 45 minutes. And again, make sure that you have earned it. Number one, make sure you've earned it, okay? Like you've been really great all week. You've been on point. Might have had a couple slip-ups. Make sure you've earned it, you know? If you've had a cheat meal, then if you're like at, got some family function to go to or some type of crazy, um, if, if, if you're going out with friends or something like that or family members, whatever have you, you're going out with the hubs or the, the wife, you know, be clear, be clean that week and then have your fun when you're with uh, your significant other or your family, okay? Um, but again, limit it to 45 minutes. It's basically dinner, let the dinner digest, order dessert. And you're done. Okay? The next day you pick things back up where they started. Cool? All right. So, final things to consider. Okay? Eat for performance. Now, again, I know this is a fat loss and weight loss nutrition seminar, but again, I want you guys to think about it this way. Like, the weight and the fat loss will come as long as your nutrition's on point. Okay? But again, the better you eat, the better you perform. And the better you perform, the better you're going to look and the better you're going to feel. See how it all kind of coincides with each other? So think about eating like an athlete, okay? You don't see athletes, well, at least I don't, I don't see athletes that, like, have eating disorders, you know? I mean, I ha again, I could be completely, completely off my game. I could be completely full of crap. There might be some. I've never heard of any, okay? But you're not going to see many football players that are, like, really lean, have a lot, hold a lot of muscle, that are going to birdie or eat, like, two or 300 calories a day and expect to lose weight. It doesn't work that way. Okay, Olympic athletes, the, the women will pack in anywhere from three to 5,000 calories, and that's because their body's already lean, they can burn that fat at rest, and they work out a lot like animals. Guys, probably most guys, five to 8,000, you know, and that's, that's legit, okay, and that's light for them, okay? I'm not saying for you guys to eat three to 5,000 calories or 8,000 calories, I'm not saying that. I'm saying eat with performance in mind, because the better you perform, the better you eat, for performance, the better you perform in the training, the better your training goes, and the more body fat you lose, okay? It'll happen automatically, okay? So don't overstress whether you're, weight, whether you're dropping body fat or you're dropping weight, okay? I know I said that's one of your goals, and that's fine, but don't be obsessive, obsessive about it, okay? So enjoy your food. Have fun, okay? Listen, from here on out, it's about fun. You know, you shouldn't be dreading your meals. You shouldn't be dreading eating. You shouldn't be dreading, you know, getting results from here on out because of the type of food you're eating or how you're eating or you're being too restrictive with yourself. You know, honestly, look up 
some meals online. See how they work into you. And, you know, they should be okay, you know? Make your food fun. Think of the long game, guys, all right? Three, six, nine, 12 months from now, rush time is over. You're not trying to get to the to the six, the six 20 pounds in six weeks anymore, okay? It, it, it's not going to work, all right? Think about a few months down the road. What do you got going on? Okay, do you have anything going on that you want to look good for? Awesome. What about six months? What about nine months? What about a year? Summer's coming up, right? Who wants to look good for summer? There you go. I mean, is there a, is there, is there a, a bathing suit or a two-piece or a bare, pair of board shorts you ain't worn in ever if – not a long time. You know, think of your goals. Put that long game into effect, okay? And just get to work. If you have a bad day, don't beat yourself up. That's the key thing. Listen, guys. Everybody gets bad days. We all get stressed. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not any different than you. I have bad days. I sometimes say, screw it. It happens. We are human, all right? Don't beat yourself up if you let loose and you just, you know, went, went like, oh, screw it, and I'm going to eat whatever the hell I want because I'm so pissed off or I'm so stressed or I'm depressed or whatever, okay? It happens. The key to it is to make sure that you get back, back on track the next day. Don't let it consume you. You had a bad day. Oops, it happens. You get back on track and go from there, okay? And the most important thing, guys, is if you need help, just ask for it. All you got to do ever, 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 ever is email me. Text me, ask me a question in class, Corinne, anytime, we are here for you guys. You don't have to go at this alone, okay? I want you guys to do the work, but if you guys are having serious problems, then I want you guys to come to me with anything you need, okay? I'll help you do this. I've done this for hundreds and hundreds of people. I probably know this stuff like the back of my damn hand, which is crazy. I do this for myself, okay? I'll be honest. I even have a coach that I listen to for nutrition, all right? You can't do it on your own. Cool? All right. So, if you have any questions, email to me, okay, about anything. Like I said, at all, I'll help. Now, some bonus material, guys, okay? So, real quick, um, there's a few other things I may, I, may, I, 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 uh, I um, left out, okay, of this, this, um, this presentation, all right? Now, I, now, there's bunch of pillars, actually five of them, for nutritional programming. Now, now it's, you know, the first one is caloric intake. Second most important one is um, is uh, macronutrients, and those are the most important two. The only reason I told you those those two at first was because that's all you need to know in order to be successful. Well, not all you need to know, but I mean, those are the biggest two most important things to focus on. But they're not everything. Okay, everything has a certain percentage, like consistency and, and adherence. To nutrition plan is number one, a number one, okay, 100%. You have caloric intake taking up about 50% of the importance. And do I have it here? Or no, 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 okay, I thought I had it here. Oh, well, whatever. But anyway, and then you have macronutrients taking, about a, taking up about 30% importance coming in second after cal caloric balance, okay? So listen, nutrient timing, when to eat, how many times to eat, guys, it doesn't matter, okay? I'm going to put it to you right now. All the body knows is it needs 2,000 calories to, to burn body fat. How often you get those calories in or what time of day you get the calories in, the body does not care. Okay? It's really not that big of a deal. All right? Like I said, failure to hit your proper calorie balance can make or break a diet goal. So if you're not hitting calories, how many times you're eating doesn't matter anyway. Okay? Failure to hit your macronutrient amounts, especially protein intake, can seriously hinder goals. Again, if you're not hitting your protein intake in order to build muscle, burn body fat, it doesn't matter how many damn times you eat. It doesn't matter. Okay? Being Failing to be optimal nutrition time will only have a small effect on the results of the program. Again, it doesn't matter if you can eat three meals a day, four, six, eight, twelve. doesn't matter. The body does not care. As long as the body is getting 2,000 calories... As long as the body is getting 200 grams of carb, uh, 200 grams of protein, 200 grams of carbs, and 60 grams of fat, it doesn't care how many times you eat. The body knows, okay, I'm getting this many calories. This is why I need to burn fat. I'm going to go to work. That is it. Okay, that's all the body cares about when it comes to burning fat. 
So how many? So the whole well, you got to eat one hour after your your anabolic window, or you got to eat six, seven meals a day. That's all BS, guys. Okay, it really doesn't matter. The body does not care. All right. So food composition. What type of food do you eat, or what food quality, or what sources are you getting your protein, your fats, and your carbs from? Again. This, again, is not as important as caloric intake or macronutrients, but I will say this, all right? You can't expect to get ripped or burn body fat if you eat Pop-Tarts and pizza all day and say, well, I'm hitting my macros. It doesn't work out that way, okay, guys? So even though food composition, what your food is made out of, is not as important as the first two, you still need to get the best, most available food sources possible, most natural Natural, clean food sources you can. Grilled chicken, rolled chicken, rice, brown or white, doesn't matter. Potatoes, sweet, red, white potatoes, doesn't matter. Okay, stuff like that. The stuff that's really going to provide your body with proper nutrients and vitamins to rebuild and repair. Okay? And if you need to have, and if, if, if your macros fit and there's a Pop-Tart, I mean, the Pop-Tart's going to help you fit your macros, have the Pop-Tart. Okay? Supplementation, okay. Now, a lot of times people really, really use supplementation heavy in order to supplement in, in, as part of their diet. Listen, supplementation is exactly what it says. Supplement a nutrition di nutritious uh, plan, okay? It doesn't mean it should take the bulk of the plan. It means you've got to be hitting all four or five or four or at least your caloric intake and at least your, um, your macronutrients to make the supplements work. Understand? Because if you're just supplementing with fat burners or pre-workout or whatever you got, listen, it's not going to make a difference. You're not going to get the results of those um those supplements you're taking and it means you're not going to get anything else out of it. Okay? You're going to be wasting money down the tube. Now, mo I'll be honest, most of the supplements I see on the on, on the shelves and uh, in 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 uh in um you know, GNC and uh, Vitamin Shop and on the web and wherever. Most of them, you don't need half of that shit. Okay, I'm going to be honest. Okay? But I would be remiss to say some supplements do not work. Okay? A lot of them do. So, whey protein powder. You guys know where to get it. I carry it. But, again, use it in quick, meal, quick grab meals or a go-to shake whenever you're on the run. Okay? Whey protein powder does work. If you cannot ingest all that raw food, or not raw food, I'm sorry, all that food, then have a protein shake, okay? It'll help to subside. It'll give you some, some really good needed protein you need and have like a piece of fruit with it. There you go, okay? Intra workout drink. Now, this is a bit more advanced, but, you know, it does help. Something I use when I train, you know, protein powder, branched chain amino acids, and high glycemic carbs to drink. Kool-Aid, Tang, lemonade, fruit juice. Here's why you want high glycemic carbs, because those are the ones that are going to go into your bloodstream the quickest. And what you want, in order to fuel your workouts a lot better, and keep that energy up while you're working out, especially during what we do, okay, is you want those carbs in order to actually just fuel your workouts. You know, you want to last the workout, you want to put more energy towards it, so you need those high glycemic carbs. And they're going to be used to just as fuel anyway, so your body's going to burn them off with the workout you're doing. Cool? So you don't have to worry about them turning to fat. So have some Kool-Aid. That's a protein powder. Creatine. Okay, this one has actually been the most researched supplement for the past 20 years at minimum. Okay, creatine, you know, basically it helps your body repair muscle and also helps your body build stored energy in order to fuel more workouts. Okay? Aids in, I don't know what macro recovery is, but aids in muscle recovery and building, okay? So it'll help you build more muscle. Like I said, again, the more muscle you build, the stronger you get, the stronger you get, the more work, the more your workouts get, the more uh, intense your workouts get, the more calories you can burn, okay? So it all helps. And another good one is probiotics, okay? So good, bet. so basically probiotics is tablets um, where there's good bacteria and it aids in the gut of producing more good bacteria to fight the bad bacteria. What happens is when your body has it has an overwhelming amount of bad bacteria in it, it'll actually hinder excuse me, it'll actually hinder digestion a little bit. Okay, so food will sit there for a little while, you'll feel bloated, 
you'll feel like you know the food like there's an actual just just big big brick in your stomach okay what the probiotics do is it helps the gut bacteria that's already there the good bacteria start to fight back against the bad one and um it actually helps the body digest and process the food how it should be okay um so those are really good especially if you're eating a lot of uh, often like a couple times a day and you're eating a lot of whole foods it's going to need to be broken down okay right? or else it's going to just sit there for a while and it's going to take forever to process and you're going to feel like you got like just big huge balloons in your stomach and you can't eat no more okay the one thing you don't want to do is eat to where you're full 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 and then you can't eat your last couple meals because of everything you're so bloated and you feel terrible make sure you're taking your probiotics drink plenty of water get all that stuff processed out Make sure it's working efficiently, okay? All right. What I want you guys to research, again, is flexible dieting. Now, we went to reverse dieting, and this is a little different. Flexible dieting, okay, is basically plants and around you being to eat any food, mainly healthy. Remember, like I said, even though food composition is not an important part, it kind of is. Again, you can't be eating chicken wings and pizza and try to get ripped and still lose weight and body fat, all right? Now, again, like I said, not an excuse to gorge out and eat crap. Macros must be hit consistently so like i said if you're hitting your macros and you're eating grilled cheese sand a grilled cheese sandwich or a ham sandwich with some swiss cheese and some wheat bread you're good okay if you're hitting your macros making sure you're hitting the fat content and your your carb content and your protein content and you had a couple of baked uh sweet potato fries or something like that you're good okay i want to make it an everyday habit but again, if you go out, you still hit your macros, you're fine. Okay, you just have to think about what you can add in in order to make the make it fun, like ice cream. There's plenty of low calorie ice creams out there, and still hit your macros. And that's really it. As long as you're hitting that and being consistent and making your 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 your, your nutrition 80% at minimum, 80% clean foods, you're gonna be okay. All right, no need to have to eat chicken and broccoli. Or steam chicken with brown rice every day of the week. It it's not that serious, guys. No one here is gonna be stepping on stage. I well, at least I don't think so. If you are, then yeah, we we can talk about it. But if you're not gonna step on stage or have no aspiration of being a fitness model or a bodybuilder or anything like that, then you don't need to eat like that. Okay, eat like a regular person. Maintain your discipline as far as like you know your macros, staying within the macros, not gorging on anything. And you'll still lose weight, guys, okay? Enjoy your food. Enjoy your life. And again, to wrap it up, set a goal. Remember, you have to set a goal. you got to make it smart, okay? Make sure you know what you want and get after it. Stick to the plan, okay? It's going to be hard at times, just like the six weeks was, but you have to know what you want going in and how to go about it, all right? If it's important to you, if it becomes a must, then there's no issue. You're going to hit it, okay? Be flexible. Life happens, guys. Life happens. It's not going to stop because you want to lose weight. It's not going to stop because you want to look good on the beach this summer. It's not going to stop because you want to get 30 extra push-ups. It's not going to stop. Life will happen. Be flexible. Give yourself a little bit of a bit of a mental break. Okay. If you mess up, you mess up. Get back on the train. Cool? And have fun, damn it. All right? Like I said, listen, this should be a journey. It should be fun. Okay? You should be able to experiment with foods. Nutrition, still get go, still hit your goals, still have fun eating. It shouldn't be a drag. If your food is a drag, if your nutrition plan is a drag, if it's not any fun, you're not going to stick to it. It won't happen. No matter how how good you are on the plan, no matter how dedicated you are, if it's not fun, if it's bland, if it's boring, if it's, if it's miserable to be on a diet plan for you, then you're not going to stick to it. Okay, make it as fun and pertainable to you while getting the results and that's really all i got guys again like i said if you have any questions anything you need get with me let me know and i'll be glad to help all right hope you guys enjoyed the video if you have any questions any type of any type of comments leave them below we'll be glad to answer